back to another week of Kidopolis. It's a new week and it's a new month. So we have a whole new theme. So that's kind of why I'm here. You see what's going on behind me? It's a project that I started. I started it two days ago, but it's been in my mind for a while. And I didn't work on it today, but I'm going to as soon as we're done recording. because I want to finish it. And I was thinking about taking a day off, but then I saw the material for our lesson this week and I was like, nope, gotta finish it, okay? So our new theme for the month of May is, that's my drum roll, okay? It is determination. Deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. All right, and we're gonna learn a lot more about determination and finishing what started, more than just my silly little side art projects that we have here, which hopefully will be done for you guys to see next week. We're gonna learn about how it applies to Jesus and our faith and um, how we can talk to others about what Jesus' life was like. All right, so let's go. Okay, so our big idea, our main theme for the month of May is unstuck. Don't give up. Okay, guys? So real quick, Miss Jessie's going to tell you about um, her day a couple of days ago. I had a pretty bad day. It's kind of a bummer of a day. And I was like, you know what? I've been wanting to do this project for a while. I had the paint. I had the tape. I had a pencil. I had a yardstick. I had everything that I wanted to do. And I started. And I don't know if you saw that pattern. But it was kind of really, in, it's not really intricate, but you have to be really specific with your lines. Everything has to be straight so it lines up perfectly. And when I did it the first time, oh, it's such a mess. It did not look good. And I had just spent like an hour on it. I was so upset that I almost just like said, hey, we're just going to paint this whole wall back to one color. It's one of the colors I use. But I stopped and I thought about it and I'm like, you know what? I started this project, even though it's tough. I'm not gonna give up. So, I did, and I know it's only halfway through, so check on me next week to make sure it's done. But, our bottom line this week is keep going, even when it seems impossible. I was looking at those diamonds, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? How can anybody do this? Maybe I can just get wallpaper. There were so many things that I thought I could do instead of just doing it um, myself. It seemed impossible, but I kept going, and so far I think it looks pretty good. All right, so um, we sent out an email this week that has the so-and-so show for the week with our Bible story. Miss Jessie's not going to go over it too much. We are going to go over two Bible verses this week, but the Bible story you'll want to see, it's in the so-and-so show, okay? And it's going to tell us all about Jesus and his followers who kept going even when things seemed hard. It's going to pick right up after um, Jesus rose from the dead on Easter, which kind of seems impossible, but he did it, right? So there's so many more things that seem impossible that Jesus can do. Watch that and let me know what you think, okay? Right now we're gonna play some games. We have three games and then we're gonna go over our verses. Okay, the first game that we're gonna play this week is called Stuck Unstuck. It's really easy and you only need a couple things. Some cotton balls, um, some Vaseline or petroleum jelly, or some Vicks Vapor Rub, something like that, anything that's sticky. Because here's what we're going to do. Esme and Phoebe are going to play this week. What we're going to do is we're going to take a dab of our sticky stuff and put it right on their nose, okay? Then, with their arms behind their back, they're going to go to a plate of cotton balls that I have, and they're going to stick it to their nose without using their hands, though, okay? And then they're going to run across the living room, which our living room isn't very big, but that's okay. And then when they get to their plate, they're going <laughs> to shake it off. <laughs> and it might be kind of hard to do, but you can't use your hands. Um, I'm just going to sit here like this for a while because I don't want to shake anymore. Does that sound fun, you guys? All right, let's go. Okay, I have my petroleum jelly or my Vaseline. Whatever you have that's sticky at home is fine. It'll work. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to put a dab on each of the girls' noses, okay? You don't want to put too much because then it'll be too hard to get the cotton ball off. But if you put too little, it's going to fall off, and then they're going to have to kneel on the ground to pick the cotton ball back up. So you want to make sure you have just enough, okay? They're going to put their hands behind their backs, and when I say on your mark, get set, go, they're going to bend over their plates, grab their cotton balls with their nose, take them across, wiggle them off, all right? On your mark, get set, go. <laughs> Good 
You guys showed a lot of really good determination. Even when things got sticky or unsticky, you guys kept going. That was a great job staying determined and working to finish your task. Yay! Now, let me have Phoebe do a quick victory dance. Okay, the next two games that we're going to play are pretty similar to one another. I take this blue line of tape down the middle of my living room. You don't have to do that, but if your parents let you, that might be fun. Okay, this game is called Possible or Impossible. This side of the room is going to be possible, and this side of the room, what did I just say? Possible, impossible, okay? So I'm going to read something out loud, and the girls are going to decide if it's something that seems possible or impossible. You can play along at home. You don't have to tape anything. Um, that side of your room can be possible and this side of your room can be impossible, okay? I'm gonna stand over here, but I am a neutral party. Okay, number one. You can touch your elbow with the hand on your same arm. So you can touch your right elbow with your right hand. Is that possible or impossible? Okay, the girls will say it's possible. What do you think? Try it right now. Can you do it? Can you touch your elbow? Maybe come over here. Seems like it shouldn't be that hard, but it's definitely impossible. Come over here, Phoebe. All right. I unfortunately know the answer to this one. You can stay up past midnight. Possible or impossible? You think it's impossible? I'm not neutral anymore. I know I stay up past midnight more than I should. Get your sleep, guys. It's good for you. Okay, a person can run faster than a car. Possible or impossible? I think it's impossible. I mean, it depends on how fast the car is going, but if a car is going as fast as it can, and a person's going as fast as they can, which one do you think is gonna be faster? So it's probably impossible. God can make a sick person healthy again. Is that possible or impossible? That's right. Esme, why do you say that it's possible? Because God can do anything. God can do anything. An eagle, you know, with the big wings, can fly to the moon. Is that possible or impossible? Impossible. That is way too far for an eagle to fly, and they might get sick when they're flying in space. Okay. Some trees can grow taller than the Empire State Building. Is that possible or impossible? Yeah, I'd say that impossible. Not on this planet. Snails can sleep for three years. Not Miss Jessie, snails can sleep for three years. Possible or impossible? 
You're not sure? It's actually possible. They do that. Isn't that nuts? Last one. Ready? Jesus came back from the dead. Possible or impossible? You think it's... <laughs> Phew, that would have been embarrassing. All right. So um, that was fun to play with you guys. If you come up with any questions to play, let me know and maybe we can do them next week. Um, put them on Facebook or anything like that. And let me know what kind of possible or impossible things that you come up with. Okay, so some of those things seemed possible and they turned out to be impossible. And some of the things that seemed impossible were actually really possible. So we're gonna focus on that second part, the things that seem impossible, but they're actually possible. Let's think about all the things that Jesus did in his life. We've talked a lot about them, him raising from the dead, the miracles that he did, making people feel better, making um, them be able to see, turning uh, water into wine, turning a little bit of fish and bread to a lot of fish and bread. So many things seemed impossible, but he made it possible. So as you read your Bible, um, maybe as we go over the Bible story with the, uh, the people in the so-and-so show, think about what seems impossible, but what God actually made possible. Okay. This one is called Impossibly Awesome. And this time we're just going to have two sides. This is going to be side A and this is going to be side B. Okay. It's kind of like Would You Rather, but everything that we talk about, we're not going to do any of the yucky or the gross stuff. Like what was... Would you rather eat a plate of worms or would you rather eat a plate of rotten tomatoes? We're not going to do that. That's yucky. The tomatoes probably. Yeah, I don't want weekly worms. But we're not going to do that. We're, everything's going to be awesome because what Jesus did for us is awesome. So we're going to keep it awesome. Okay. So what side A, side B? Is that what I said? I'm bad at this game. Sorry, guys. All right. So, would you rather, listen carefully, would you rather um, have a free week-long vacation to anywhere you want in the whole world or a free month of dinner every night at your favorite restaurant? Make sure you face the camera so people can see your pretty faces. Okay, Esme wants a free vacation. Phoebe wants her favorite restaurant. Phoebe, what's your favorite restaurant? Okay, no, I know. What's your favorite food? Ice cream. Ice cream. Okay, where would you go on your vacation? Disney World. Disney World. All right, you guys tell me the answers to your questions, okay? All right, back on the line. Back on the line. Okay, so would you rather... Let's talk about vacations again. Go um, to a vacation on a nice beach where the weather is perfect every day. Or would you rather go camping with your family? The weather is also perfect and there's lots of hiking to do. Which would you rather do? We got a beach bum and a hiker. You know what I say? Put them together. That's my idea of a good time. All right, let's get back together. Okay, here we go. This is impossibly awesome. Let's see if this is if this is impossibly awesome for you. These are hard questions, don't you think, guys? Yeah. Okay. So, would you rather um, invent a new flavor of potato chips or invent a new flavor of ice cream? That's ice cream. Ice cream. Okay. What would you invent as something with chocolate? I bet. Mustard. Mustard ice cream. They have that. What do you? What would you invent, Phoebe? I'll let you think about mint. that. Mint. Mint chocolate. Mint chocolate. Something mint and chocolatey. Something new. I once entered a contest for a new flavor of potato chips, and it was um, broccoli mac and cheese. I thought that would be a yummy potato chip. Am I crazy? Let me know. All right, so I hope you had fun with that game. Um, maybe come up with some on your own and let me know, and I'll tell you the answers to mine, all right? Some of those were really hard to choose, and I bet you when you played that game before, it was almost impossible to choose things. And a lot of the times, you try to think of little loopholes or things that make your decision easier. Sometimes things are really impossible, but if you stop and take a step back, 
it actually is possible to do. So think about that. Think about how you can apply um, that to your life in some of your impossible decisions. And just remember that Jesus, God, they're with you to make the impossible much, much more possible. Okay, guys, I hope you had fun with those games. Um, we're going to start our memory verse time now. And now, I don't know if you saw, I made an announcement in our church Facebook group page. But we're going to have two versions of the verses. We're going to have the versity and the junior versity. Okay, if anybody thinks that's funny, please let me know because I think it's hilarious. Okay, so junior versity. This is for kids, um, I would say like kindergarten and younger to try and memorize this verse so that they can, well, first of all, we all know why it's good to memorize verses. It's God's word. And if it's in our brain, it'll be easier to keep it in our heart, right? Right. Okay. So that's the first reason why you want to memorize your verses. The second reason is Miss Jessie will drop a treat off on your porch if I get a video of it. So memorize your verse, have your parents film it and send it to me. I promise I'll keep it secret. But if you want to post it on the Facebook group, um, if your parents do, that's up to them. Have fun doing that. Our first verse, and if you want to pause, you can get a good look at it, is from 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, verse 13. Something fun about Thessalonians, it was written to um, people who lived in a place called Thessalonica. I just think that's a fun word, don't you? Thessalonica. Okay, <clears throat> so as for you, brothers, do not grow tired in doing good. As for you, brothers, do not grow tired in doing good. As for you, brothers, do not grow tired in doing good. All right, and that's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. Um, next week, Miss Jessie will show you um, how to find 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 13 okay we'll do it together this week together we're going to go through and we're going to find this is the versity this is kindergarten and up adults if you want to play go ahead i'll give you a treat too okay this is galatians chapter 6 verse 9 feel free to pause it if you need to okay i'm going to read it and then i'm going to find it in the bible with you guys okay let us not become tired of doing good at the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. All right. Memorize that, okay? So now we're going to find Galatians. Open up our Bible. In your Bible, you probably have right here, table of contents. Mine has them um, in the order that they are in the Bible. And then it also has them in alphabetical order, okay? So, since this is the versity, the versity version of our memory verse, we'll go with the order that they're in, okay? So, I know that Galatians is in the New Testament, and I know it's one of Paul's epistles. Epistles. Um, words are sometimes hard for Miss Jessie. So, I am here in the New Testament. I see Romans, and oh, there's the Corinthians, and here's... Galatians, which on, in my Bible, it's on 645. It's probably not on page 645 in your Bible, okay? Bibles can all kind of be a little bit different, um, but for the most part, they say the same thing, okay? So sometimes the words are a little different. The words that I'm going to find in my Bible right now might be different than what's on my sheet, and that's okay. Make sure it's a, a good Bible. Mine's NIV. This one is NI. RV, which is pretty closely related. All right, so I have Galatians. See how it says big on top? Galatians. All right, chapter six. Chapter six. Do you remember if it's the big number or the little number when we talk about chapters? The big number, the really big number. So here I see one, two, three, four, five, six. I found six. Okay, so then we got to find verse 9. That's when our fingers come in handy. We run our finger down. Well, there's the little, it's, it's going to be teeny tiny, okay? It's going to be, in my Bible, it's half the size of the other letters. 
There's seven, eight, I'm getting warmer, getting warmer, there we go, nine. So Galatians chapter six, verse nine, that's how we find that. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we'll, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. See, that's a little bit different than what you guys are memorizing, but it's okay that they say a lot of the same things. One more time, don't forget to press pause if you want to take a picture or write it down. Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Okay, guys, send me videos of those memory verses, and I will send you a treat. Promise that it'll be something that you like, and it'll be something that your parents can wipe off so there's no germy germs, okay? Um, now we're going to go ahead and go pray. All right, it's time to pray, you guys. Um, if you have any prayer requests or any praises that you want to report, I, you can let me know. I can either keep them private, which I will do unless you say not to, or I can share them and we can all pray together. I miss praying with you guys. Oh, and I miss you so much. I cannot wait until we can play some of these games together. Ah, it's going to be so much fun. So until then, we're going to pray by my wall. Let's pray that Miss Jessie has her determination and does not give up so that I can reap the reward of this wall being done and the satisfaction that it's done, okay? We're going to pray for other things too. All right, here we go. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the ability for us to connect, even though it's not the way that we usually do. Lord, I am so grateful that we have a way that we can be with one another, um, that we can learn about you, that we can do the activities that we would normally do together. Even if we're not in the same room, we can be together in spirit. And I'm just so grateful for that because Lord, this is a weird time, but we have the ability to make it a great time. Um, help us spend this time to connect with our family, to connect with you, to make great decisions that bring us closer to you and to our family. And we can bring other people into the family of God. Lord, I pray that over the next few months, as things are slowly getting back to normal, that um, you help us make great decisions, that you help us stay safe, that we we use um, our thinking and our brains that you gave us to make great decisions. Um, I pray that everyone has a happy, healthy spring and happy, healthy summer, and that soon that this will be a memory. And Lord, I thank you for the joy that you've given us during this time so that it can be a happy memory. Anybody else who isn't having a great time, Lord, I ask that you um, talk to the people around them, that you put it on their hearts to figure out a way to make this a joyful time for all. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for my friends. I miss you guys. I thank you for my church. I thank you for my family. I thank you for all the blessings you've given me which I know are more than I could ever count. We love you. We pray it all in your son's name. Amen. All right, guys. That's all I have this week. I tried to keep it a little bit short since we have those two verses. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. If you have anything you want to share with me, please let me know if you do your memory verses. Uh, Miss Jessie is on the Facebook. You can email me um, and you can text me. Whatever. Whatever.